One of the objectives that it set for itself was that it's going to be much more inclusive in how it gathered information and, and comments and, and, and developed the content. Where we are now is that we've had quite an expansive consultation deciding on how it's going to be presented and we're hoping to by the end of the year issue the first draft of King 4-4 uh, public comment. The membership requirements changed because of the expectations of audit committees that changed. So, whereas audit committees before had reporting, they now need to um, also be conversant in sustainability matters because sustainability has now been brought into the reporting conversation. So integrated reporting I think is what the huge differentiator is between the situation that we had to deal with when King 2 was drafted as opposed to the situation in King 3. And because that understanding of integrated reporting has now developed since King 3, it has repercussions for how we deal with it in King 4. They are moving um, in, in general. I do think that there are, are challenges, that there are matters that audit committees need to come to grips with. Um, examples of that is, for instance, the combined assurance model that was introduced through King 3. Audit committees, I don't believe, have come to grips with that adequately. Um, the issues around integrated reporting, the assurance um, implications of it, even to uh, get go back into what an integrated report should look like and what information should be included in there I think audit committees it's it's a journey um, are, are, are still coming to terms with it and and I have to say that um, I, th I think that that audit committees are learning with the rest of us so um, it is not as if they lagging I, I, I just think it for all of us it's a, it's a journey to understand these complex issues Well, those would be the changes um, in um, the fact that sustainability reporting has now been added to financial reporting. So, so there needs to be an understanding of sustainability issues. The risk landscape has changed. So it, it's not as if um, risk duties were added, but just dealing with that duty has become more onerous. If we look at technology as an example, technology has moved from being an enabler to becoming pervasive and an integral part of strategy and, and the business. And, and now um, technology has become a disruptor of long-standing business models. And the speed with which this dis disruption happens um, poses great challenges for audit committees. Um, if we look at emerging risks like cybersecurity, very difficult area for audit committees to, to, to get their heads around. So the Companies Act um, um, elevated the Audit Committee to becoming a statutory committee and one of its statutory duties is to ensure the independence of the auditor. But at the same time, the Audit Committee also needs to be independent of, of, of the auditor and needs to be able to evaluate and assess the work that the, the auditor has done. That is the main purpose of the Audit Committee, in fact, to make sure that a quality audit is performed. And that cannot be done if the Audit Committee relies completely on the work of, of the auditor, of course. It must, they, they, there needs to be robust interrogation and discussion of the output of the auditor. And I think it's because the users of the report, the investors and other stakeholders, want, want to have comfort around the fact that the audit committees are performing this duty, that there's now, now um, calls for the audit committee report to deal with um, significant audit matters that came up during the audit process and then how the audit committee addressed it. it it's just to give the user of the report some sense um, of how the audit committee performed its duties. Materiality is, is something that's, uh, that's come up um, because um, 
because of the notion of integrated reporting. And now we understand now that in, in terms of our understanding of the integrated report now and how it's developed, integrated reporting, uh, an integrated report is a concise and clear representation of the organization's ability to create value over time. Now concise, conciseness is, is one of the overriding principles of an integrated report. Now, I think, is it Churchill who said that um, I wrote you a, sh a long letter because I didn't have time to write you a short letter? So, it, it's, 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 you can only be concise if you really have a firm grasp of, um, of the organization and what drives it, its critical dependencies, its business model, etc. Now, you can't report all issues in the integrated report because the integrated report needs to be concise. So, what is the filter that you apply to determine what gets included in the integrated report? And that filter should be materiality. Now, materiality um, is defined in the Inter International Integrated Reporting Council's framework as significant matters that could affect the ability of the organization to create value. But that still is an abstract concept. So. In the end, it is something that is dependent on the judgment of the board and the audit committee. And it's really incumbent on the board and the audit committee to show that they are able to exercise this judgment. I think this is the litmus test for whether boards and audit committees are able to govern. If you are able, if you understand the operations of the company to such an extent that you can distill only the material information, I think you're in a good position to govern and to fulfill your fiduciary duties. It used to be that, that companies were free to implement as aggressive a tax strategy as they wanted as long as they stayed on the legal side of things. The issue with tax is that the line between what is legal and what is not is, is not always so, so, so evident. So in the example of Starbucks what they did is I think it was in the 2012 financial year they earned 400 million pounds in, uh, through the UK operations. They didn't pay a cent of tax on any of that money because they shifted the profit to other lower paying jurisdictions through aggressive tax planning. Now, payment of taxes is actually part of a social contract between a government and its citizens. So if those citizens are contributing to the success of a company and yet they're not getting the benefit of the tax that, that that is paid on that revenue, it is going to cause unhappiness, which he which did in the UK, to the extent that Starbucks eventually had to um, change its ta tax strategy so it paid some tax in, in, in the UK. Now, what I'm saying with all of this is that tax has become a strategic issue. Tax is now linked to responsible corporate citizenship and tax is, um, um, is a a reputational risk or non-payment of tax is a reputational risk. So th for this reason boards and audit committees need to get involved in the tax strategy that is deployed. It can't just be left to management to just pay as little tax as possible 